Stop doing these things and you'll greatly improve the odds of finding and keeping love in your life. <laughs> really, stop it. Stop doing all of the following things you're about to hear if and where it applies. If you try my advice on and stop doing X for a while, observe the results. You know, in life, everything we do or don't do has a positive or negative consequence. The more positive consequences we can create compared to the negative ones, the more successful we'll be when it comes to getting out there, finding someone, and getting into a healthy relationship with that someone special. So, after you've gone through all of the stops, stop doing this, ask yourself, what would happen if I did stop doing these things that Bart suggests? Would I really become a better me? That much more attractive? Safer? More productive in my search for love? In a better headspace mentally to vet the good prospects from the bad? Maybe. Okay, Bart, I'll try stopping. All that applies to me for a while, and I'll see what happens. Great. That's all I can ask. Okay. Are you ready? Let's start with this one. Stop beating around the bush. Be straightforward. State what you want and say what you mean. Get to the point. Be open and transparent. Everything's going to come out eventually. Anyway, per se. Spit it out, for goodness sake. Now, I don't mind mystery when it comes to getting to know someone. I get it. But in some cases, don't waste time. Just come out with it. Okay? Be direct. Get to the point. Go for what you want. Stop beating around the bush. Stop beating yourself up. And get out there. Have fun. Whoever gravitates to you is someone to prospect for love. Stop being argumentative or being so negative all or most of the time. It's a real turnoff. Smile, be happy, and don't let things bug you so much. It's just not worth it. Be happy. Stop wanting to date or marry out of desperation. So true. Date or marry because you found someone who could be your soulmate. Not your cellmate. <laughs> Romantic relationships and misery do not make good company together. No, 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 no. Stop being boring and be exciting instead. Start taking a fun class and do that once a week or every couple of weeks. Get off the couch. Get outside. Start living. Stop being mean and saying negative things to people, especially the one you love. You know, if this runs in your family, you know, maybe your mom and or your dad never said, you know, a nice thing to you while you're growing up. Well, that was them. And this is now. In other words, build your own road of happiness. Huh. Stop being so bossy and barking orders all the time. No one likes to be yelled at, controlled, or told what to do. Let up some. Stop being so independent. Show prospective mates you need and want their help, contributions, guidance, instead of boasting you're so strong and independent. If you don't need anyone, most people will accept you and your ability to be alone on your own. That's what independent means. And they won't stop to talk to you or help you. If they're not stopping to talk or help you, you're not giving them a chance to get to know you. So accidentally... Drop something near them and see if they help to offer to pick it up or help. If they do, say, I did this on purpose to get your attention. Got a minute to talk? And then smile. Stop being so surface-like in personality and character. Instead, be deep. Take things slower. You have much more to offer. You're much more careful about who you let into your world, yes. When you're young... You don't have much experience or money, per se, so you go fast to acquire such. Yeah, But when you're older, you realize you have more time and resources to some degree. So you take things a little slower and maybe a little more methodical. Hookups are fast. You don't do hookups. You're into five to ten hour sessions in bed with three to eight orgasms for her and one to three orgasms for him. The whole orgasm gap has been flipped on its head. You're like a ship at sea. 
Ships move slowly, but they're also exciting and majestic to the eye and to be near. Huh, stop being so nice. It's nice to be nice, but not to the point where you're being taken advantage of. Boundaries. Remember, stop being so sensitive and or emotional. That can get draining and tiring after a while. Develop a backbone. Let some things roll off your back. Sometimes it's better to react without reacting. Let it go. Stop being so triggered when you don't agree with someone and what they said or they made a mistake and you won't forgive them. You know, this usually winds up contributing to the cancel culture epidemic happening throughout society today. One little thing upsets you and you go cry out to have that person's account deleted, fired from their job, etc. Stop it. Stop this insanity and grow some thicker skin. Learn to see someone else's point of view, accept apologies, and forgive people for making mistakes. If you don't, you could be next, and out the door you go. No one's perfect. Give folks a break more than you already do. Stop coming off as desperate. Desperation is very unattractive. Both men and women can smell it. Get a hold of yourself. Pick yourself up. Improve yourself. Work on yourself. You actually have more options and strengths than you think. So don't feel like the first or next person who comes along will be the last person ever interested in you. That's horse pucky. Stop dating people who hold you back, hold you down, discourage you, or are negative towards you. They beat you up emotionally, mentally, physically. <laughs> Three letters. B Y E. Bye. <laughs> How about four letters? D-O-O-R. The door. How about five letters? Out you go. O-U-T-U-G-O. Out you go. Stop dating people who hold you back. Stop dressing so hot and seductive, ladies, like with a lot of skin showing. Yeah. You know, guys, stop dressing like bums. (laughs) Put on a sport coat from time to time. You'll stand out from the crowd. And you'll look important. And like someone everyone wants to get to know. Yes, ladies, be careful how you dress. You know, the sexier you dress when you're single, the more you'll attract the wrong type of guys. You know this to be true. So stop trying to get around it. Do you want short-run fling relationships or long-term relationships with a great guy who can really devote himself to you and your lifetime growth? Ladies, like I said earlier, Do you want to be looked at or gawked at? Also, accept the fact you're contributing to the objectification of women. Okay? All right. Now, cover up. Guys, instead of dressing like a dork, dress like you're going to meet your banker. A sport coat, nice shirt, slacks, shoes. Dress like a male model at least two to three times a week. You'll stand out. Stop eating or drinking too much. Stop smoking or doing drugs. Stop polluting your mind and or your body with whatever it is that you're doing. Stop it. It's not healthy or good for you. Stop exuding so much confidence. Yeah. And that you love being single and you don't need someone in your life and so forth. If you don't show signs that you want someone, people will have the tendency to leave you alone. I know I said that earlier, but it's worth repeating. If that's not what you want, Show interest in others. Go out after prospects that appeal to you. Be seen. Show a vulnerable side to you without risking any true vulnerability. Here's a biggie. Stop having sex with people you have no intention of being with. Whether that's just friends with benefits or a long-term relationship or something, you'll be semi-stuck with them for the rest of your life and you may never get rid of them. They'll come back to you on social media. Hey, what's up? Want to meet for coffee and maybe F later? If you want those people to come back and haunt you, go ahead. Sleep around. Just don't do it. Stop this behavior. Sleep with someone who's in your life for the long run, not the short run. (sighs) Stop keeping the bar so low. Raise your standards, not your expectations. Then live by your new standards. Stop letting people treat you like a doormat. So true. Stop letting people talk over 
run you over, have their way, treat you like dirt. That ends now. Stop letting people dictate how you should live your life. Here's what you do. Build your life castle the way you see fit. It starts by creating boundaries. Decorate your home the way you want, work hard, save your money, spend wisely, experience life, have fun, be healthy, don't care what people think, F the rest, you're the best, I say. Invite those in who respect your rules and boundaries. Find someone you are attracted to and get along with and do activities with. You're both wanting to build a castle home together. Stop living in fear of your life physically and learn some self-defense moves. Carry a gun or other weapon and know where the exits are at all times. Have someone walk you to your car when it's late at night. Don't even question this. Think of the times we're living in today. Exactly. Stop listening to music that is ghetto, thug life related, and degrading to women. This was actually some lyrics I discovered uh, when I was doing some research on this subject. Yeah, I don't care how many hoes I screw because I'm the top and in the hood. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no. No, as in, there are no brain cells in that kind of music, let alone respect for women. Am I right? Ladies, pay close attention to these lyrics. Do you condone all that swearing and other garbage directed at women? See what kind of man you attract when you listen to that kind of garbage. Guys, stop listening to that music as well. Listen to songs that portray more loving and romantic and motivational themes in them. Eventually, they will last you a lifetime. Not the other brain-damaging music that belongs in the garbage can. And here's something else to think about. You may hear that music and listen to it and think you're getting you know, your rocks off. But if somebody were to actually talk to you in that language, I mean, like, just talk to you. Like, hey, ho, why don't you come with me, bitch? You would be highly offended. So why is it that the music gets the pass, but someone just speaking to you normally does not? Do you see what's going on? So the music is going into your brain subconsciously, and you're allowing it, and you're thinking it, and you're living it, and you're dressing the part. Stop it. Stop looking for love in all the wrong places. Where do you live? Where do you work or socialize? Start looking in new places if the current or old places don't generate the romantic results you want. Bad luck in the city? Spend some time in the country or vice versa. Do some activities in some new areas of town and meet the people who live out there. If or when you meet someone, you might choose to move closer to them or who knows. Stop meeting prospective mates in the wrong places. You know, in finding love, you have to be somewhat strategic because sometimes where you meet the future love of your life will determine the quality of the relationship you will have with them. Tip, meet your prospective mate where your passions are, whether for work or pleasure, expos, conferences, art galleries, classes, events, any place where you can talk to people and get to know them. Stop obsessing about being single, being alone, or living life without someone. Instead, become who you want to spend the rest of your life with, because you will. Find out what you love and follow the scent of your passion. Love will meet you there, guaranteed. In fact, people are naturally interested in interesting people. Become that type of person. Become interesting. Stop obsessing about your failed relationships. You know, meeting someone new is not dependent on your past relationship experience. Every day is a chance to meet someone new. Single men and women are everywhere. Just get out there and roll the dice again and again until you win the jackpot. Stop obsessing about your looks. You know, maybe you are not attractive to yourself in the mirror. So says you. But you don't know if you're attractive to someone else. You know, there's someone out there for everyone. And there's someone out there who will think you are beautiful or good looking handsome. Meanwhile, keep working on yourself and get out there. Your amazing energy will attract the right person to you. What's more, there's a lot more beauty on the inside of us than we give ourselves credit for. Focus on that. Your insides, big time. Draw people to you magnetically, magically, with your inner beauty and personality. Hey, looks aren't everything. 
I talk about that in an upcoming section. You're going to love it. Stop obsessing about being rejected. Did you happen to know another word for rejection is actually redirection? Imagine going up to someone for advice on how to get to your destination. You know, your future love life. Well, instead of interpreting their rejection as a sign of weakness or they're not into you or something's wrong with you, look at it as an act of simple redirection or a step away from that person towards someone else who might be a better fit or better able to help you. You wouldn't get upset at someone if they said, hey, I don't know where that is, you know, location on the map uh, that you want to go. You might want to ask someone else who knows. You would thank them and move on in seconds and not take it personal. You want answers, results, and don't care who you get it from per se. Your confidence is high and you know your value. So you ask someone else, someone new. The same with finding love and asking people to spend a little time with you to get to know them. Hey, I want to go out sometime. No? Okay, have a great day. Hey, I want to go out with you. Would you like to? No? 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 Wow, a lot of people don't know where to help me find the love of my life. No worries, I'll keep asking. Pardon me, I saw you sitting here alone and wondered if I could talk with you while I finish my coffee. Your cup looks kind of half empty. Can I get you a refill? Yes? Great. Hey, I'll be right back. Uh, what do you have? 